Hey guys, it's Matt. Let's continue with the questions at the end of the book. There's at least 10 or 12 more questions. There could be 12 more chapters then. And then the final quote half page summary will end the book. I'm getting a late start. I waited as long as I could. My mouth is, I, I sound a little funny. It's a little numb. Um, of course, you, when you get snow for the last 10 years in eastern Pennsylvania, there has to be some rain or sleet to make each shovel full like 100 pounds. I don't think, I don't remember fluffy snow. I just don't. You get fluffy snow, rain or sleet on the back end. So here it comes, the rain and sleet. So I've got to go out there. I've got to take care of it before it gets to be 100 pounds a throw, before it collapses the little rickety parts of my deck that are all eaten out by bugs. Chapter 40, what is science? Science in this reality is like Atlas, holding up the illusion of this world and propping up the reality ruse. Science is one of the main pillars by which this world is to be believed in by the masses. And the screen's first and main goal is to always be believed in and taken seriously, for it can accomplish nothing else without first establishing that tenet. It is the screen's first commandment. Thou shall believe the world is real, and the discovery of it and its further exploration is very important. Science is a spiritual Ryan Seacrest, a distraction. The further exploration of it takes one farther away from the exploration of oneself. Think about this. Why are billions of dollars a month doled out all around the world to further the advancement of science? Where is the money coming from? Is it coming from an entity, organization, or system that's trying to help people? No. It comes from the screen or the not milk itself by way of its governments and systems. From its perspective, the more university research labs around the world that take its made-up money, the better. From the movie Contact, remember? First rule in government spending, why have one when you can have two at twice the price? Regarding university research labs and all other forms of its systems investigating the types of things it once investigated, doing the types of science that it wants, there's thousands or tens of thousands taking its research grants. The more groups working to foster evidence that supports the reality ruse, the better. Apply the rule of opposites. If, in general, science could foster a real breakthrough that could lead to an understanding of oneself, our place here in what we call the universe, anything meaningful to you or to me, do you think the not milk or the screen would spend a single penny on it? Of course not. It would be closing down university research parks around the world in the name of a cooked up cholera outbreak. Because it spends billions a month spread around to any group that will foster its aims, proves by itself that science is a key part, if not the key part, of the reality ruse. All you have to do is follow the money. Where's the money coming from? If it all leads back to Dracula's castle, then maybe the cause wasn't so worthy. You see, whether this world you believe is hijacked or not, hijack, whether you believe that or not, there's still a fake reality that tries to spread and perpetuate itself, the outer ring of, of reality, the outer screen layer, and there's a real reality, heart-centered based, something very local, something very loving, something of a completely different frequency. See, in general, science that furthers what the screen wants, that reality Science and all that's represented by it, Neil of the Grass Fed, Mitch Pikachu, and all the rest, even people at universities down the road, just people trying to do the best they can with their telescopes. Science in that regard is not compatible with the real reality. Science is not compatible with reality. The real reality, the one without the illusion, without the magenta sprinkled all over it, Matt, if the world isn't very real, as you say, isn't that depressing? No, that's the best news of all time. Saying it that way, or the way I say it, only means the world is not what the scientists say it is. There's a lot to be gained here, but not from what they say it is or pursuing what they t tell you to pursue. They, more than anyone else, have fallen for the trick. These scientists, more than anyone else, have fallen for reality's trick. It's absurd that the focus of almost everybody in academic authority is on the physical, even if you include the wave, particles, wave, physical, wave, anything out there. What's the point? They're playing right into the hands of the trick. When they present ridiculous things like the Big Bang as dogmatic fact, scientists' view of the universe brings meaningless to people's lives because that's what it's designed to do. 
So when reality breaks down before our eyes and demonstrates itself to be the opposite of anything that authority tries to explain, then that's great news from our perspective. Physical explanations of the universe are simply an intellectual form of distraction. Right now, a great woman at Oxford University is writing a book that will help us better understand the life cycle of a pulsar. This person is highly respected at cocktail parties, I'm sure. But why? What is that person's life's work at the university doing to support their own self-work? Engage in not milk scientific activities, and what are you doing? Well, you're doing everything except part two, your own self-work. If I was at the cocktail party at Oxford, I don't know, I sneaked in, I hear somebody yelling at me, Matt, the only way you get into that party is if you were holding a little tray with the pigs and blankets. Maybe I got the job holding the pigs and blankets. Either way, I'd say, Dr. Aachen Goldenschlager, Dr. Susan Goldenschlager, oh, you're working on that book about the life cycle of Pulsar. Oh, yes, I am. Um, can I just say one, give you a little bit of advice? Oh, I guess, yeah, way about yourself. Why, why are you worried about what's out there? Worried about what's in, and I'd be pointing into her chest, but not touching her, I'd be arrested. Worry about yourself, Dr. Goldenschlager. You see, if the information being pursued by thousands of Dr. Goldenschlagers and everybody else at the university research parks, if it was legitimate what was out there, and it was worth something, and in some way meaningful, then I could kind of understand it. But none of it is meaningful. I personally see it as all the way on the other side of the sliding scale of reality. I see all that nonsense, all that Carl Sagan, billions and bi I see that as part of the reality ruse itself. Okay, I understand. Even to people listening here, that may be going too far. But let's just take Dr. Goldenschlager again. What is she doing in the little time she has left in this place called Earth to work on herself? What is she, okay, if that's just, if she just sees it as a paycheck, that's one thing. And a comfortable, that they don't, do they see it just as a paycheck? No, their entire self-worth is wrapped up into what they do for science under the auspices of whatever title was granted to them by the university. It, every reward, everything that they're going to one day put on their tombstone, every sense of self-worth, every all the applause, it's all sought by what the position at the university brings. So if I'm screaming at, at the cocktail party and now I'm being thrown out, I'm being dragged out, worry about yourself, doctor, that is legitimate. It's not like she's just, yeah, I, I've got to do the science thing, and then I can't wait to get home and work on myself. No, these people define themselves by their jobs and positions. The Not Milk loves that shit. And doctor, one more thing, love your suit. So if reality is fake in some way, in some way, right? We see reality is fake in every single metric. Every time we look, it's the best news of all time, at least for people like us. It means it was put here for you, in a sense. It's not random didn't come from no space dust or the color from outer space. It's not random. It means you're not random. Consciousness came first. A big bang didn't create consciousness. A big bang didn't create a devil's food cake. A big bang ain't shit. So the faker it gets, the more real we get. It's a bad way of saying it, but I kind of like it. Matt, can it get any faker as we observe it? Well, yeah, absolutely it will. We don't, I don't, we don't see how that's possible. It could get any worse in its presentation and its unbelievability, if that's a word. We don't see how, but we know deep down, oh, it will. And those on the ship will just shake their heads and say, thank you, sir. May I have another? So let's not forget the premise of this chapter, what is science? The closer one gets to science and what the not Nook says its most highest and just pursuits are, the more one cozies up to the delusion and the illusion. That's my premise, and I'm sticking with it. I think the old guard would agree. I'd be hauled off as insane if anybody stumbled upon this video. The delusion of this place must be maintained for the outer ring or the screen or the knot milk to maintain its existence and, of course, to feed and sustain itself. It is a role player, and this is primarily how it feeds. It creates energy for itself through different aspects of the illusion. People fall for it. Real people fall for it. A tiny little group like us doesn't. 
these big name PhDs at Cambridge and Oxford in the Ivy League, they're so in love with their accomplishments and the accolades they get from all these scientific journals and, oh, this person was published here and cited here and maybe one or, one or two of them got the Obama Award for Stupidity, actually awarded at the White House. They put a big banana around your neck or something. They're in love with their accomplishments. But honestly, if you st take a step back, what have y'all done? What have you done? There's basically three parts of this entire fake reality, and you only understand one part of the three. I did this in the other book. We'll do it briefly now. The very large, what is the universe? What's on the other side? Then, oh, the universe is expanding. Somebody at Cambridge says it makes $800,000 a year. Oh, that's great. What's it expanding into, you jackass? Oh, 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 oh I don't know. I got to get lunch. They don't know. What's it expanding into? What is that? You can't just, if you have one answer, then you have to have the other. The first answer doesn't mean squat. They don't, they don't understand the very large. They don't, they don't understand the very small, the quantum. What, what's smaller than a quark? I don't know. We'll keep looking. That's what CERN's for. What if you find another smaller? What's in the next Russian nesting doll? We'll keep looking. It can't go on forever. Something that has to be made up of, of itself. Any first grader can see that. So they don't understand the very small. They don't understand two ends of the... They, all they understand is the middle, Middle Earth. Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth. They understand the physical. They, so they say, we can predict eclipses 300 years out. Oh, that's just wonderful. You can and you can tell me what a pulsar is, but nobody's seen it. They can they can, they understand the middle part, and they're proud of themselves. That ain't shit. What sort of achievement is it if one can only deal with the middle slice of something? They are as impotent as a cheesesteak sandwich shop who's run out of bread and offers to place the greasy meat into your cupped hands. One proviso, guys. We've talked about this, but it needs to be said here. There's two different things going on. There's the fools running on the hamster wheels, the university research labs, and most pursuits of science that are going to make a magazine or be written about in the New York Times. Then, of course, there is the creepy back room. Somebody here, some minion at some level, knows how this reality works. Reality buttons and levers. The meeting with the Baphomet floating up in the air as Bill depicted it. Somebody knows how this reality works. And see, in my opinion, that tiny little group is fine with all these hamsters on the wheel. See, they know the science that the Ivy League is pursuing in this area or that area isn't going to get anywhere. But that's what they want them doing, and that's where they want to lead the masses. The more the Ivy League can waste their time on, on this or waste their time on, on that or waste their time on writing a book about the life cycle of a pulsar, and the masses then say this is the leading edge of science, that then leads all the sheep away from potentially the real truth. Not that the real truth is finding out exactly what this reality is, but if you find out how strange it is, people might actually start doing what we're doing. Worry about yourself. If this place is believed in, the science is legitimate, it's cutting edge, and this is what should be on one's tombstone, then there's no room, there's no time, and worry about yourself activities uh, are a waste of time. It's not what life's about, Matt. Don't you know that? These scientists here said like the creepy guy with the white hair in the movie Contact, and all across the world, they are doing their best. They believe wholeheartedly in what they're doing. They sleep well at night. Their pursuits are just and the pinnacle and the apex of what anybody can achieve. They're using the data, though, the universe affords them to reach conclusions. That, that's the problem. How else can you go about it? Well, they shouldn't be going about it at all. That's the point. They track pulsars in deep space, and they waste billions, for example, trying to find smaller and smaller particles in particle colliders like CERN. It's all a waste. There's a minion level here that knows these pursuits are a waste of time, that know how to pull the reality buttons and levers, are completely thrilled when these breakthroughs come out in the next scientific journal, whatever. They laugh all the way to the you-know-what, knowing all of these groups of science are pursuing nothing more than the hamster wheel. Because here, I can prove it. What happens? All the New England Journal of Medicine, scientific breakthroughs, over and over again, every week, right? All this stuff has, we get better iPhones, we get, we get better social media. Other than that, what happens when they have a breakthrough? Squat. How does it improve your life? What happens when they find a smaller particle? Does it lead to peace on earth? Does the smaller particle lead in some way to free energy? Does it lead to anything mankind, quote, can use or you can use or the freeway traffic goes down? Translate any scientific breakthrough written about into an improvement in your life other than social media and a damn phone. It doesn't do squat. That proves it right there.
We haven't talked about this for a while, so let's not forget the very important hobo codes we use in our example here, the Aluminum Ducati Control Centers, Chernobyl Center, and Pennsylvania Three Mile Island Center, a backroom meeting where maybe they track the wasted gerbil on a, on a wheel pursuits of science. Uh, who's got the updated cancer cure updates? What, what do they work? What's um, MD Anderson working on in terms of, well, they believe through this type of proton therapy. Oh, that, we know that's a waste. We, we have all the cures here. We've, had, we've, we've known why a shark doesn't get cancer for 120 years. Actually, we, we have that information from the Library of Alexandria. It's right here. It's stuffed in George Soros's pants. But we, oh, what they're working on over there? Oh, that's that's wonderful. That they we know that leads nowhere. We what what are they working over here in terms of? Um, there's a there's a group at a small university that's trying to do some sort of free energy or what are they? Where are they? Oh, we know that doesn't work. <laughs> we have the free energy right here. <laughs> Sorry, you try to replicate what the back room meeting of assholes might sound like. I ain't going to use no AI tools. I use my own damn voice. How many scientists keep on the table that the entire reality is playing a trick? Maybe no scientist has ever thought that in the history of the world. This data, say, that comes in from a $40 million radio telescope at Brown University and whatever else they wasted their money on, the data that comes in, this information collected, must certainly be of real value and of high value, right? Why? The thing being sampled itself must be real up there. Why must it? It's never questioned that collecting more information about what it, the outer ring or the screen provides, collecting more information about what it's giving to science, it's just accepted. It's always just. It's always good. It's always the utmost height of what one can pursue. Why? No one dare question it. Well, to me, it's all part of a reality ruse. Science's realities are the dark part of the not milk's most convincing argument that what is presented in your life and what is around you is certainly real and should be believed in. And it's elements you should take very seriously. Don't worry about yourself. Go pursue it. So I question science as the interpretation of an entire reality that I see as the trickster. Okay, I understand a lot of people, different groups, will totally disagree and find basically what I'm saying insane. But very quickly, the evidence will again line up in my favor. Oh, okay, let's just say whatever you're trying to study with this radio telescope or whatever the university wasted its money on, let's just say that thing is real. Okay, so then whatever information and data that's collected, everybody would admit has to come to the scientist through the senses, right? Oh, these same pathetic senses that can't take in 99 point whatever percent of the information that's available. It can only take in about 1%. The hearing is only about 1% of what can be heard. The, 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 the visible light spectrum is only like 1%. It's well less than 1% if you take all the frequencies like gamma rays, x-rays, all the background noise from what they call the universe. So the senses is taken in 1%. And you scientists are really smart, and you're studying things you know are real, but your senses are only allowing you 1%, and you have no access to 99%. Then it has to be filtered into the brain, which is completely limited, governed, dumbed down. And then you have to fight through your own bias. And what's left after the Niagara Falls that the universe provides? You, you're left with what? A drop? A trickle? Oh, but your pursuits are really just. It makes sense. You're wasting your time on them. I'm sorry. You're really smart, and Davenport is 22 mile away. And if that wasn't bad enough, the senses, you could say, in a way, work for the parts of you that are attached to this place or are subservient to this place. The body is of this place, the ego mind. That's where you're getting your information from. That's like buying product from Lefty on Sesame Street. It's not to be trusted. It's of this place. In a way, it's of the trick itself. So you assume it's real. It's filled 99%. Just throw it out. You have no access to it. Don't touch it. 99%. Here, you can have this 1%. You can have this little trickle. And then you put it through your dumbed down, governed down brain that's full of bias and using the parts of you to figure it out that are of this place. See, that, yeah. Might as well just deal directly with Lefty and cut out the wholesaler, you dumbass scientists. And if that wasn't bad enough, there's even more evidence that these scientists are just hamsters on the wheel. Matt, there's even more? There's even more. Now, this is they would find this insane, but we've seen this happen over and over again. 
Some smart people would postulate that the reality itself starts to show people over time what they expect to find. So in this, I know it's a stretch. Hear me out. We've seen too much to take this off the table. Some jerk off postulated in 1895 that there could be theoretically something like a pulsar or a quasar or a neutrar or a transor Z star, whatever. And then it's actually found in the 40s and 50s because they think it theoretically it's possible via the math and they expect expected to find it, and then the reality showed it to them. Now, that's probably so insane I could be hauled out of here, but we've seen too much of this. It's absolutely possible. Either way, it's a gigantic trick, and these, these just like the person in contact with the white hair, these scientists are falling for it more than anybody else, but they're the most, because they're the most rewarded and most respected in this reality and culture, then it's the rule of opposites. Then you know they're falling for it worse than anybody else because of how authority respects them. You see how that works? And remember what I said earlier. I think there's two things going on here. There is the scientific community pursuing whatever, and then there is those at the creepiest of creepy tables, things or minions here that actually know something, that know all of these pursuits are going nowhere. And if the pursuits actually would lead to something that would actually benefit people's lives, they would put a stop to it. There's two things going on. These scientists aren't in on it, but the creepy table probably pays attention. And they know that 90%, 95% of these pursuits just spinning wheels. But then you go out to the university research park and the top scientists at their cocktail parties, oh, they believe they were just published. They found immutable truth about this, whatever is up there on the other side of Mars. And it's a fundamental immutable truth that benefits somehow. You say, how does it benefit anybody? I don't know what they would say at the cocktail party, but you know what they are? They're as fooled as a porn star in a pickle convention. There's a bumper sticker in front of me here on the highway as I slow down for the traffic jam. It's, trust the si- trust the science. You got to be fucking kidding me. Apply the rule of opposites. If it was regularly and monthly changing people's lives for the better, it would need a little mantra. You'd trust the science because you'd see your life improve. It's that simple. On the other side, if it begs for you via little bumper stickers to trust the science and the little mantras that it circulates hundreds of millions of times around the world through its media, then at least in that particular case, the science can't be trusted. It's just the rule of opposites. Again? With with us? Uh, It's the rule of opposites again. Of course, the premise here goes much farther than a cooked up walrus and a punch in the arm. In terms of trusting the science, I am proposing All of science cannot be trusted if that science's aim is to tell you about the world and everything around you, and it doesn't try to tell you a little bit about yourself. Science never does that, does it? Well, sure it does, Matt. Look at like the origin of species, where you came from. You came from Homo erectus pecoris. You, you, you came through this lineage from monkey man, from marmot. Science tells you where you came. You know what? You're right. I'm going to take it. I need a proviso on what I said. When it does tell you about yourself, it's all lies. Stamp that on your forehead. One other provision worth noting. Of course, one could call, say, the invention of penicillin science. Of course. That's not what I'm talking about, of course. Science, in some sense, per its broad brush definition, did some good. Science, at some point, created aluminum foil. You know, aluminum foil is very useful for sandwiches. It's done some decent stuff. I mean, in some areas, you, to sell consumer products, whatever, to keep my meat fresh, whatever. Okay, I, I MSG and my Chinese food, some of it's good. But you know what I'm saying in general. You know, the process of science is, no matter what, is not trying to tell me something about my spiritual self or anything I can truly use in my worry about yourself journey. If it tells me where I came from, it tells me the monkey man, (laughs) the monkey man lineage. I don't need that. I don't need Homo erectus, pick this Transor Z or Optimus Prime lineage. I don't need to know that. I don't care. Okay, I need to, if you want to tell me something about how a soul is actual energy and do the studies on that, and it'll never go there. Of course, it never will go there. All it can do is it can, it can put decent science forth. That creates aluminum foil, and I appreciate that now I can cover my egg salad. The rule of opposites has many equations and related axioms that can be applied. 
in general, what we're talking about here, if science tries to tell you about your origin, tries to tell you about the world around you, your place in it, then that science simply exists to support the trick. Trust the science. Think about this. Not one thing out there in space has been verified. Let me repeat that. Not one thing out there, if it isn't even out there, how do you even know how to talk about it, has been, quote, verified. It's all math equations. It's all Sega Genesis video games. If Mitch Pikachu actually went out there himself to observe a quasar, whatever that is, that would at least be something. All they do is collect data and run it through their math equations and their modeling. And Matt, they don't. They sent V'ger 1 and 2 out there as well as the Cassini. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to shut the whole channel down right now. I forgot they did, They and they sent Viking 1 and 2 to Mars just about four days after Apollo 17. That's right. I, I, I misspoke. I'm going to shut the whole channel down. You believe, I'm, I more believe that V'ger came and visited Captain Kirk in the 1980 adaptation of the original Star Trek series. And all this data collection, as mentioned, but it's worth mentioning here in our summary, it goes into the dazed and confused and bong resin senses. The scientists go off to study Niagara Falls, and maybe they stand before it, and it's all around them, but you know what? They don't see it. They don't hear it. There could be waterfalls, millions of gallons a minute of data, real data potentially to collect, but in this body, we ain't having it. The universe says, you can't have this, you monkey men. Well, we're scientists doing good work. What do we get? Oh, the universe says, you get less than 1%. You get nothing and like it. What? It's like, you promised me a full buffet. Yeah, and all we delivered is a pea and a stale piece of bread. The scientists stand there before Niagara Falls, having to rely on their senses. They stand before the waterfall, just getting a tiny bit of spray on the end of their nose. And then they think from that tiny little bit of spray, they've figured something out about the waterfall itself. Now, this is, if not the most arrogant thing in the world, really pathetic. Is it really so out there? And the crazy part of YouTube to say that the reality itself is delivering a trick? Is that so bizarre? Oh, I'm sorry. You have 1% to work with. You're right. I'm wrong. I'm going to shut the whole channel down. Sorry, Dr. Richard Feynman, if it agrees with your experiment, it's wrong. No, Matt, you got that wrong. He said, if it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. No, it's just the opposite, rule of opposites. If it agrees, if your conclusions agree with your experiment coming from the trickster reality, then you fooled, you a fool fooled, and you're wrong. Matt, you arrogant son of a bitch, are you saying you're smarter than Richard Feynman? I'm a million times dumber. Smartest people in the world, you know what, are often the most fooled the most fooled into believing what this reality offers, a big stinky yellow breadcrumb. has nothing to do with intelligence. In fact, intelligence usually hurts one's ability to see through the trick. And there's a lot of reasons for that. One is, of course, they know deep down how smart they are. And they would, deep down, whether they're talking to themselves or not, saying, well, these conspiracy people over here, there's no possible way I was fooled my entire life. That they, What these people are, these people are crazy. I, there's no possible way that can be correct. I couldn't be fooled. But all of us, if you're here listening to the sounds of the words coming out of my mouth, we all were fooled and we all admit we were fooled. But most of us admit it. How many times have I said I was a child of the matrix, believed in every bit of it? Now I don't believe none of it. What's the other scientific mantra? We talked about trust the science. Science will win. Haven't you seen that on a t-shirt or a magenta hat somewhere? Science will win. Um, Here we go again. If it's so great (laughs) what you're doing, you don't have to promote yourself. If people's lives are changing for the better, then everybody would be on board. What's your little mantras for? Trust the science. Science will win. Why does it need pitch lines? Like, it always takes me back to the CNN. I don't know if they still do it, but I don't know, decades, the most trusted source of news, so many years running, or tr- some James Earl Jones, his member Darth Vader's voice, would come on and t- tell you how trusting, trusted it is. If it has to tell you how trustworthy it is, rule of opposites, it's not, tr- it's not trustworthy. If you would have a 30-year track record of showing people real news, and you don't need a mantra. People would just say, oh, you covered this better than anybody else. I trust you. If you tell me, "Uh uh-oh, then you're not trustworthy. It's so simple, and the rule of opposites has never been broken. 
Let me give you an example that's somewhat ridiculous, but nevertheless proves the point. Remember the supermodel, if you're over age 40, Cindy Crawford? Do you remember that Pepsi commercial? That was like 88 or 90 or 92, or that hot day, she's just guzzling that Pepsi, wearing that white tank top or whatever. To somebody like me, that's like the height of, of, of what a woman can be. It's like, oh, my, that, that damn Pepsi commercial would come on, and you just drop your pizza slice on the floor and go, oh my, oh my God. Anyway, my cousin, I told you this story before, I'll be brief. He worked for the San Francisco Giants baseball team. The magazine sold ads for the magazine. He had to go to tons of games, entertain clients, etc. He says, Cindy Crawford's throwing out the first pitch. Who wants to walk her around and, you know, just kill time with her for 30 or 40 minutes before the pitch? Nobody raised their hand right away. My cousin's like, I'll do it. My cousin's like, I don't know. She's the height of her superstardom. This is in the 90s. He's, uh, I don't know, he's probably around similar age. So he said... She she was just, okay, I'll get to the point, just as gorgeous as the commercial and what he expected, okay? This is the height of her supermodel popularity. Now, she, when she approached the mound for the first pitch, she didn't have to wear no t-shirt that says, this is a beautiful woman. Trust, trust the science, whatever the other, mo- it didn't have to, she didn't have to tell people this is a beautiful woman. She, she just was that. Michael Jordan, when he went on to kick your ass on the court, this is a good basketball. No, he just, okay, bad example. Trust the sun. You don't have to keep, if you keep telling me, then any normal person would be skeptical and say, well, now you've told me too much. I don't trust it. What's wrong with you? If you need a pitch line in this reality, if it comes from the screen or the outer ring, it's usually or almost always the opposite. Shawshank Prison voted number one again. Inmate satisfaction. It's almost always the opposite. Thanks for listening.